for the first frame, you're probably going to want to turn that off, and, and I'll explain why later. But for now, let's just go ahead and get this labeled and see how things work. Uh, if you click in the black, it's not going to label. You need to actually click on a dot, and you need to get that centered in your crosshairs. Uh, you'll you'll kind of click around and get a feel for that. Uh, and then heal. Okay, so now I labeled the first frame. Okay, so now let's hit the escape button on the keyboard, and that gets us out of labeling mode. So we can, um, now we notice that we have one dot that didn't decide to be labeled throughout the whole uh, sequence. But all the rest of them did. And you, you see, this, this is, you know, when you design nice, easy studies like this, it, this is fairly quick uh, to do this. But we have to compensate for this dot that, that disappeared. So let's zoom in and strafe down, and we can use the left and right arrow keys to, okay, that's what happened. The dot disappeared from our camera. So now I'm going to show you some, some tricks in order to find out what's going on. What we want to do is we want to split the current window horizontally. Okay, and so what that does is that's going to split our three-dimensional view, and we want to switch this down here to the graph. By default, it's going to go to the components, and that's going to show us the x, y, z coordinates of whatever we click on. So let's go back a frame and click on that particular dot, and it's going to show us what's going on with that dot in x, y, and z. And so that's going to be the, the coordinates uh, within our uh, uh, virtual volume. Okay, so if we if we we notice here that we can uh, go back. And um, sometimes there's a bit of a delay when you do this because it's trying to uh, track things. So uh, bear with me while this uh, program catches up to what I'm doing here. I'm also recording uh, this, so I'm tying the computer's hard drive up. So there, there might be a little bit of a delay. Uh, bear with me. Okay, yeah, sometimes if you just click in the black, that, that, that helps. Okay, so uh, again, if we click on this, and we can see that if we go back to the beginning, the dot's present. This is just showing where there is a dot, and then the line is just the interpolation uh, from dot to dot or, or frame to frame of the video. Now, if we notice if we go ahead, 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 then we go to the next one, it's gone, right? But if we go ahead, it's back, but it doesn't know that that's the dot. So what we have to do is we have to tell the program that that is indeed the dot, which is going to be, in this case, left PSI. So let's click on the left PSI. Again, turn off auto advanced selection. Let's click on the dot again, hit escape, and now let's click on that again. And now what we can see is we have uh, the dot being tracked uh, throughout the trial. And let's zoom out here. And it does indeed track the dot the whole sequence. But if we click on this dot, remember, we had the one frame where it wasn't there. Okay, so this is what the program does. It's kind of like magic, but it's not really. It's just, it, it's going to um, fill in this gap because we need to know where that dot would be uh, to run our model. Okay? So, uh, this looks like a fairly easy sequence. Uh, it's, it's a one, one frame gap, and we can see where there's a gap. LPSI, it's a one frame gap. And so what we can do is we can go ahead and click on that, and it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, ask us how do we want to fill this gap. We can either use spline fill or pattern fill. Okay, what spline fill does is it takes an average uh, of the coordinates from where the dot was last known into where it reappears again. Uh, that's just going to do an averaging. That's good for small uh, gaps. In the case of larger gaps, you really want to use pattern fill. And what pattern fill is going to do is it's going to uh, use one of the other dots on the same segment. And it's going to evaluate the pattern of movement of that dot, and it's going to apply that pattern to the other dot. Uh, I I'm going to show you right here how both of these would work. So what we need to do is we need to pick our source first. So in this case, I'm going to pick left ASI, because th those dots uh, tend to move in a very similar um, trajectory. So if we click on this again, it's going to evaluate, if we zoom in here, what it thinks are both the spline fill and the pattern fill trajectories, right? So uh, these are, in this case, absolutely identical. And it, it's actually really hard to see. The, there we go. You can see the green right here. There, so everything is identical. So we could pick either one in this case. It, what it's showing, the cone is where the dot was last seen to where it is next seen. Now we can spread this out 
and have it evaluate over a larger uh, area. But we, we don't need to do that because the dot is actually there, right? So let's just go ahead and pick spline fill for right now. And you notice that it puts the dot on, okay? And now we have, no longer have a gap. But it does still look like the gap is here. What we need to do is click in the black area and then click on the dot again, and you'll notice our gap is now gone. So this is good. Now, uh, had we calibrated our subject, we could actually run a modeling uh, on this and determine things like uh, changes in joint angles, velocities, uh, how much force is, is present at the joints, and things like that. But again, I'm going to save that uh, for right now and just show you uh, how to track the dots for a simple sequence like this. Okay, that's the end of this tutorial. Um, I want you to practice this several times, and we have a number of trials for you to do this. So uh, go ahead and get your practice in.